Only God can create a beautiful flower garden like we have today. Black, white, brown, yellow, red. Only God can do this. Only God. And then tell everybody of every race, you got to obey him. That's right. You got to obey him. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Acts 17 and at verse 26. Acts 17, 26. Says, and, and has made of one blood. Yeah, made of one blood. All nations of men. What is the one blood that all men are made of? You're born in the world with sin, sin. shaped into iniquity, fashioned in lust. And all of us are contaminated or were contaminated by the failure, the transgression, the sins of the first father, Adam. That's right. And in order to get out, and our one blood was tainted. With his sin. That's why God instituted the new birth to get rid of the tarnish yeah. out of our sins. Someone said, well, I didn't do the sin that Adam done. I just inherited. So why do I got to repent? You're not repenting for the sins of Adam. You're repenting for your sins. That's right. And the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ wash away all sins. All sins. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Now the spirit. Speaketh expressly. Now God. Speaketh expressly. Express mm -hmm. himself. How do God express himself? He make manifest his word through preaching. Through preaching. Through God preaching. do not express himself in any manner where lies is preached. No, no. Because God is not a liar. That's right. When someone make the Godhead more than one, God is not exp right. expresses himself. No. So you got to remember, it says the spirit speaketh expressly. Speaketh expressly and God don't lie that's right God don't mislead that's right God don't teach you wrong that's right God don't give you misinformation mm -hmm. someone say well Pastor Jennings I read history good, good. history is good yeah. when it don't contradict God that's right did you hear what I said that's right history is good when it don't contradict God that's one of the dangers of Google that's true and internet there's a lot of lies over oh, internet. Lies. Oh, yeah. And a lot of us are believing and preaching things that's to no profit based upon internet information, failing to realize the information on internet is the study of some man. Yeah. And it's just posted based upon man's study. That's right. People write me, Pastor Jennings, I believe the earth is flat. Who cares? Find the edge and walk off. <laughs> If the earth is flat, it's going to pass away anyway. I'm going to waste my time on arguing you about the shape of the earth. If it's flat, it's going to pass away. Square, pass away. Rectangle, pass away. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away with a great noise. That's right. Waste your time over some stupidity. Flat earth. Find the edge and walk off. That's right. And see, can you land where there's water and be baptized Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you get what I'm telling you? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit? Praise the name of God. Amen. What is it, son? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. What are they doing? Giving heed to seducing spirits. And what's connected to that seducing spirit? And doctrines of devils. Hold it. Devils. Seduce. Let's define what is seducing. When you are seduced, you're conned, yeah. manipulated, yeah. tricked, bamboozled, <coughs> led astray. A seducing spirit comes from the pulpit that manipulate, that con, yeah. that calls sincere people to swerve. That's right. As the Apostle Paul teaches, right. they swerved away mm -hmm. from God's word. In the it book doesn't matter if you're sincere. If you follow a seducing spirit, he's liable to manipulate your sincerity and make it work to his advantage and your disadvantage. Now in 1 Timothy chapter 1, we'll First start Timothy at verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 1, begin at verse 5. Now the follow end, me. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 5. Has what? Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. Yes. And of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Mm -hmm. From which some, having swerved, have Wait turned aside. Wait a minute. Amen. Establish what it is again now. From which some have... No, let's go back to what it is. Back at verse 5. Listen, now I want everyone to listen closely, because I want you to pay attention. What the Bible's telling you, the people swerved from. That's right. 
Are you listening? That's right. All right. Now the end of the commandment. The end of the commandment. Is charity out of a pure heart. Love thy neighbor as thy himself. And of a good conscience. Have a good conscience. And of faith. Believe God. Unfeigned. Unmovable. From which? Unfeigned, not foreign, unmovable. Not trying to believe in something else in the same manner that you believe in God. That's right. Uh -huh. From which From some. From these things. Some, some having swerved. Hold it. Let's, let's, let's hold it right there. Amen. Everybody all right? Amen. Let's look at the term swerve. Swerve. When you're driving, sometimes a thing pop up unexpectedly. You whoa, you got to turn. Well, this is what have happened in religion. So many things pop up that you may find yourself have to swerve around to avoid hell. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Satan bring many beliefs up in fathers and mothers and brothers and uncles and relatives. And this is where you need to disassociate yourself from believing something is true because your mama said it. Yeah. Your daddy said it. Yeah. Relatives and God are not the same. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? Jesus said, who is my mother? my mother, sister and brother, but he that do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my mother, sister, and brother. If your father is following the word of God, man, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. If your mother is following the word of God, that's beautiful. That's right. If your brother and sisters and relatives are following the word of God, that's beautiful. But if they're not careful, the devil can trick and deceive them as well. That's right. That's right. This is why we can never approach our spiritual walk based upon our own opinions, our own feelings, our own emotion, and our own idea, and our own philosophy. Yeah. This is why I tell people never approach the Bible and say, well, this is what I think. We don't care what you think. That's right. This is how I feel. We don't care how you feel. I don't say, well, Pastor Jennings, that's rude. Give me Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55. Oh, you already there, aren't you? Amen. Come on, son. Isaiah 55 and at verse 8. All right. For my thoughts. God talking. My Give thoughts. Give Captain verse again. Isaiah chapter 55. We'll start at verse 7. You start there then. Let what should Dallas do? Let the wicked forsake his way. What all the viewing orders need to do? Let the wicked forsake his way. You that are writing me, telling me, well, Pastor Jennings, you won't take my opinion. I most certainly won't. That's right. Your opinion don't mean nothing to me. That's Pastor right. Pastor Jennings, my spirit don't agree with you. I know it don't. Your spirit is not designed to agree with me. You That's need right. the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need God's spirit. Amen. And God's spirit is not your spirit. That's right. Them that is of God, Jesus, speak plain. Yes. My sheep will hear my voice. And if you got sheep and got the right spirit and hear the word of God, even if it condemns you and make you angry, you're going to say amen. That's right. That's right. If it hurts your feelings, you got to say amen. amen. If it makes your mother mad, you got to say amen. amen. Hallelujah, glory right. to God. That's right. Hey, what do you say, son? Let the wicked forsake his Let way. Let the wicked, blessed be the name of God. Forsake his forsake way. Forsake wicked. And the God says to you, wicked. forsake his your way. way. That his means way. stop it. That's right. Stop this cheap prosperity lies. That's right. Stop this hustling the people out of their money. Let the preachers get a job and go to work or let them die and go to hell. Amen. The Bible said if you don't work, you don't eat. That's right. I got a job. Yeah. I got seven kids. Oh, yeah. Four boys whose stomachs are like bottomless pits. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God have never set the church up to make pastors rich. No. Make bishops rich. No. Your preacher want a yacht? Let him get a job and go buy it himself. That's right. Your preacher want a Bentley? Let him get a job and go buy it himself. That's right. Your preacher want a plane? Let him go out and sell ice cream and buy it himself. Amen. Amen. You give these bums your money, they ride in a jet that you never get a chance to ride in. That's true. That's true. Stop sending your preacher children to school. Yeah. If you got money, they send your bishop children to the best schools. Why don't you send your children to the same school? That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Preachers been telling this lie for years. 
God's men supposed to have the best. When you have God, you got the best. Amen. If I don't have a mansion, that don't mean I'm poor. That's right. If I don't have a Maybach, that don't mean I'm poor. That's right. If I only have one suit, that don't mean I'm poor. Amen. The greatest wealth is God himself. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. What did he say? Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked to my gangbangers mm -hmm. and to my pole dancers in your club Amen. and wig wearers and toupee wearers. Amen. Fake eyelash blinkers. That's right. Am I right? That's right. Lipstick wearing, earrings wearers, and nose jewel wearers, and, and got your breasts all piercing, navel piercing. You men that want to pierce your lower nature. Yeah. Amen. What's the matter with people? You men that want to wear dresses and you women that want to wear half naked skin tight jeans and your behind is hanging out of them. Go ahead. Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let the wicked I let, have. Let the wicked forsake his ways. Forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man. And the unrighteous man. His thoughts. What? Let, and, let, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let the unrighteous man do what? Let the wicked forsake his way. And? And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Listen, brother. <laughs> when you want to wear a dress, that's an unrighteous thought. That's an unrighteous thought. Right. I was in Houston. And me and the brothers, after one service, I think it was Saturday night service, the first service, went back to the hotel. And when they dropped me off, Huey, he walked me up to the room. But we was in the lobby waiting for the elevator to come down, there was a group of young men, young girls, and young men. And there was some young white brothers. They all had on navy blue suits and whatnot. Pretty clean. You know, I looked at the suit. I said, hey, Ricky, you young cats are pretty clean. He said, yeah. But then I looked down to the feet. <laughs> there was one young brother had on loafers. And there was two that had on sparkled female pumps. A two-piece suit, shirt, necktie with pumps. Lord. Now, this is how bad the Christian, so-called Christian world have gotten. They are so mentally warped until they say, it doesn't matter. Why would you speak against it? That's not loving. No, a man in pumps is not loving. No. I mean, would it look like Pastor Jennings come down here in Dallas <laughs> and here we come through the door Somebody said, oh, you got a decent suit on. And then you don't see my shoes till I come up here. Right. And I got heels all up here. Amen. <laughs> my brother said he ain't coming. <laughs> Why? You from the hood, ain't you? <laughs> but our men are so weak today. Oh, yeah. You follow anything. That's right. And that's why a lot of women don't respect you as a man because you follow every piece of weak trash. That's right. That robbed you of your manhood. That's right. You thank your man because you knock up a bunch of women and make a bunch of babies and you too cheap and lazy and worthless to take care of any of the babies you got. Amen. Amen. You ain't a man based upon your performance in bed. Right. Roaches perform. That's right. That's why it's hard to get rid of them. Right. You turn the lights on, rope is running. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. So this is why God made me a tough, hard, rugged, rigid preacher. That's right. Who loved the world. That's right. And who sent to the world to turn the world back. To him. That's it. You know, one scripture, the Lord says, return unto me. You can't return unless you left. That's right. Return. God want everybody under the sun to return to him. Come back to him. And when you come back to him, you're not coming to Christianity. No. I said, will you come back to God? You're not coming to Christianity. That's right. There is no religion in the history of the Bible called Christianity. No. 
they was first called Christians in a place called Antioch. Antioch. But Jesus never called his own followers Christians. No. Nor did he call his teaching Christianity. That's right. That's why I tell the world, come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back to Bible. Yeah. I had a Lutheran minister write me and told me, he said, he called me Reverend Jennings. He didn't know no better. He said, Reverend, I find your speeches very interesting. And he said, I heard you speak against the Lutheran church. What do you have against Lutheran? How many here was a Lutheran? Anytime. Raise your hand. Oh, good. You done good. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. Hmm. The word Lutheran was the name of a man. His name was Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King. Right. Martin Luther King mother named him after Martin Luther. Martin Luther came from the Catholic Church and had a gripe with certain religious practices and beliefs of the Catholic Church. And as a result of such, he broke off from the Catholic Church and started his own religion named after him Lutherans. So every Lutheran church is named after Martin Luther. So their religion started by a cheap, weak man. That's right. Are you listening to me? Amen. This is why I'm trying so hard to show you stop going along to get along and understand the context of scriptures. How many for years used to tell people your religion was Christianity? Tell the truth. Raise your hand. That's practically everybody. Christianity, such a term, such a religion, it never been in the Bible. The word Christian, which is a person who strives to live like Christ, that been in the Bible. Until Peter said if one suffer as a Christian, as a Christian. meaning suffer like Jesus. That's right. That's right. Christian, person. Christianity was abstracted from the word or the title Christ. Christ Christians mean followers of Christ, but Christianity is supposed to be the name of the religion that Christ started. Liar! That's right. Liar! Let me make another example. There was a man in the Bible named John the Baptist. His religion wasn't Baptist. The word Baptist means baptizer. His occupation was baptizer. So John plainly said, I'm not the light. I'm not the light. But I come to bear witness of the light. Then he preached Jesus. He said, one come after me. He's mightier than I who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. The fan is in his hand. And he shall thoroughly purge his floor. Hold it. What do you mean he going to thoroughly purge his floor? Hold it right there. In most churches, when they down there praying, what they call a tarry service, people be spitting, foaming at the mouth like mad cow syndrome. <laughs> and the bishops have told them the Lord is purging you because he said he's going to thoroughly purge his floor. That's a mighty dumb preacher. <laughs> the word purge don't mean spit. Purge me to purify or clean. Jesus said you're clean through the word that I speak unto you. And the apostle says, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. So why did Jesus said he shall thoroughly purge his floor? The floor of Jesus are the people because the floor is beneath you. We are beneath God. So God will purge us, cleanse us. How? Through God everlasting word. That's right. Thoroughly. Purge his floor means thoroughly clean his people. It's not you somewhere in some church praying, spit, hanging down your mouth like a hand. People got to come wipe your mouth. Wipe your own nasty mouth. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. Let the wicked forsake his way. You see, I can, I can preach this strong and boldly because years ago when I was younger, I was under the same uh, illusion of such foolish teaching. Right. When I came up in falsehood, the preacher 
used to tell the people, oh, don't wipe the people's mouth when they spitting. God is getting the sin out of them. Yeah. Listen, Jack, if spitting get the sin out of you, then you shouldn't get upset when somebody spit in your face. <laughs> when somebody spit in your face, I mean bring it deep. <laughs> and they lay it to you, just tell them, oh, that's all right. God just straightened you out. Yeah, he's just getting the sin out. <laughs> so I was raised, taught the same stupidity. So I remember as a child <clears throat> when I was praying for the Holy Ghost and the word tarry just simply means wait. You see, we've been taught what is called tarry service. Yes. Where you, everybody's in there, Jesus, 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 Lord, Jesus. They say, that's it. They say you're tarrying. No, that's prayer meeting. That's right. Tarry just simply mean wait. That's all it means. Because we ain't tarrying, we tarrying now. What are we tarrying for? We're waiting for the coming of the Lord. But you get what I'm talking about. So I remember as a child, because I was taught, if you ain't spitting, you ain't doing nothing. Man, I'd be on my knees down there praying, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. What I'd, I'd be looking around at folk. And I'd be like, man, I can't get my spit to come up like other folk. So listen. I, I can look back at it now and laugh. So for me to feel like that I'm doing something, you know, I'll look around, make sure nobody ain't looking. I'll be like, <laughs> man, I'll be spitting all on my chair. And then sometime I would ease the spit to the tip of my mouth and make it hang and see who's washing. And then I just look around and just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> yeah? Because I was taught if you ain't spitting, you ain't doing nothing. Do you see how good it is when your understanding come open? Amen. When you look back at how ignorant you are and now see your mind is starting to develop and learn the Bible, you can give God thanks oh, yeah. for having mercy on you to open your understanding. That's right. Because knowledge debunks ignorance. Knowledge debunks Ignorance. Never get to a point you look at how old you are and think you know everything. Yeah. Because as long as we live, there's room for growth, Amen. knowledge, and more knowledge. That's right. Listen. Let the wicked forsake you. Your chapter and verse again, William. Still in Isaiah 55 and at verse 7. Everybody all right? Yeah. Let the wicked forsake his way and, and the unrighteous man his thoughts and, and let him return unto the Lord. Wait a minute. Obviously, you left him. Left him. Backslider. Mm -hmm. Backslider. Thousands of you are watching that once was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, once had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, and you saw something go wrong in church. And you say, oh, man, I'm leaving church and going on in the world. Well, wait a minute. Nobody deeds in church should not determine whether you stay with God or leave. Did you hear what I said? Why, Pastor Jennings? Do things go wrong on your job? Oh, yeah. Do you walk off the job? Then why you treat your job better than you treat your Lord? That's right. Well, I left the church because of the preacher. I left the church because of the organist. You didn't come for the organist. No. And you ain't come for the preacher. That's right. You're supposed to come for the word of God to save yourself. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It says what? Let the wicked forsake his way. Leave your way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the unrighteous man his thought. Leave your unrighteous thought. Williams left his. Yes. He used to believe in three, now he believe in one. one that's Thank right. God for Williams. You know, last week was his birthday. If you saw the telecast, we say happy birthday, William. He may not look at it, but my brother's 60 years old. Amen. You know? So, we were sitting in the pulpit, and before it was time for me to preach, he was sitting in the pulpit. And Williams always would shake his finger in my face to get me told. He said, oh, oh. He, said, he, he said, you know what day this is? He said, you know what I am today? I said, no, what? He said, I'm your elder. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So when it came Amen. time for me to preach, I said happy birthday to him. And, and there's hundreds of greetings over the internet saying happy birthday to you. Hundreds of them. Saying, saying happy birthday to you. Amen. Anyway, <laughs> sitting in the pulpit. When we mention it, and I told the church what he said, he said, yes, Elder Williams. He said, he said introduce me, Elder Williams. <laughs> All right, come on, Elder Williams. Amen. Come on. You see how happy he is? <laughs> huh? 
Come on, Williams. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. That goes for you too, Elder Williams. <laughs> Forsake his way. And the unrighteous and man. the unrighteous man. His thoughts. Listen, all of us have thoughts that we should not have. Amen. There's not a person in here, including me. <clears throat> I don't do like other preachers try to put myself above the word. I'm in that word just like you. That's right. And all of us got thoughts that we got to get rid of. Oh, yeah. And because we don't want God to catch us or cut us off with the way sometimes we think. That's right. Because sometimes meeting some people make you want to do something to them. Amen. And Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. There's sometimes, brother, people want, they make you want to do something. Amen. I mean, this is after you spoke in tongue. After. <laughs> after you spoke in tongue and yeah. after you shout. I want to paint a realistic picture of this holy way of God. Oh, yeah. If you walk around and think serving God is walking around grinning and smiling like you in the Cub Scouts or Girl Scouts <laughs> or right. Wee Blows, you's a fool. That's a fool. You see these blind infidels out there on the street giving you literature. You a Christian today? You a Christian today? You a Christian? They don't even know who Jesus is. That's true. Man, when you make it up in your mind to walk with God, a life of self-denial is a life of Pain. Oh, yeah. And every time you get in mind to walk with God, the devil have a way of bringing people in your life. Oh, yeah.